Good morning everybody and welcome to Manchester Airport where it's minus two mid-December and it's quarter past six in the morning. So today it's travel day, very thrilled to be back in the air after a few months absence and I'll talk to you a bit about that as we go and I'll show you all about the Manchester Airport experience which is apparently getting better so I'm told. So I'm going to get out of this cold weather now and uh, show you around. Uh, so my one piece of advice to you would be travelling through any of the terminals here at Manchester 1, 2 or 3 is uh, it's a particular hang up they have here at Manchester which is always bring or use one of their see-through bags for your toiletries, don't use your own uh, they have a real hang up with it and uh, I've travelled through all of the airports in the UK and this is the very worst one for stuff like that, they are very pedantic uh, wrong way around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the staff members just put his thumbs up at me, <laughs> but I got the camera pointed towards me. Anyway, I'll shut up morning now and just show you around. Uh, flying down to the Canaries, you can get a slightly higher allowance, I think. Let's check out the prices. See if they've got my favourite Bushmills. So it's not bad prices actually, but uh, where I'm going is all inclusive. Uh, so, uh, got to say, um, Despite the fact that I have that rather rude security agent there, which is not unusual for here, that's just something you have to get used to. Uh, just spoke to a particularly nice chap there in the uh, uh, the duty free hall. Uh, he was just uh, trying to sell me a bottle of teeling whiskey. Don't know. Perhaps Neil Turner can advise on teeling whiskey. I've never tried it. It's an Irish brand. Never even heard of it. And apparently, it's very nice, but also eighty quid a bottle. So I might just give that a pass today. Let's see if we can see my flight up here. Uh, so my flight's not up there yet. My flight's at 10.15. Still only 7 o'clock. And I have got that lounge booking as well. So I might just go check out the lounge. Let's just have a look around the terminal a bit more. See what's what. The other thing, of course, is that being an airport, you have to watch out for where other people are walking because they're not watching where they're walking. What can you do? Always best to get your liquids before you get on board water and stuff like that because the airlines charge a fortune for this stuff and I'm just fine with Jet 2 this morning so they don't have a business class cabin so nothing's free although I did order the spaghetti bolognese and that will round off well assuming I get it that will therefore mean I've tried all of the Jet 2 non-vegetarian hot meals bingo and I'll let you know which one's my favorite after I've tried it so the centerpiece of terminal 2 here at Manchester its new terminal is this the beehive and it's it is impressive like I say I mean if it wasn't for the security staff it would actually be a nice airport to use the security staff are just so rude <laughs> but I've been through here hundreds of times over the years and it is something you just get used to to be honest but as I've just discovered and this is a common problem here at Manchester Airport the escalator going down is broken they're not stopping people from using it but an escalator is kind of supposed to move with you I guess uh, it's not doing that this morning. Again, it's a common theme here at Manchester Airport, as anybody who's ever tried to use the walkways from the station will know. Again, you know, you kind of just get used to these inconveniences now. Should you have to? Probably not. But do you? Here's my next challenge, right? I've just arrived at the lounge entrance, and I've paid 38 99 to enter this lounge. And the reason I've paid this morning is, despite having the Amex Platinum card, despite having priority pass, Manchester Airport and Gatwick as well, and we've got to be balanced here, of course, are notorious these days for just refusing priority pass, as, is a, as are a growing number of airports around the world, really, to be honest. Priority pass is pretty much rubbish these days. Apart from in the Canaries, I've never yet been refused into any of the lounges down on the Canary Islands. So, I paid 38 99 to use the Escape Lounge. That's not the best one here. I couldn't get into the 1903, which is 
I think about 50, I think it's about 55 pounds now to get into. I've been in there in a previous video. I didn't really rate it, it wasn't that good. It's certainly not worth 55 pounds. Is this one worth 38.99? Well, we'll see, I guess. I'm begrudged to pay it, but you all know I love a nice airport lounge, right? So it's torn. I was in that juxtaposition, do I pay it, do I not? If I don't pay it, I'll be miserable, sat on the concourse. Nothing wrong with that, of course. And for 38 99 I probably could have had a really good breakfast in one of the many restaurants you've got here. But I do like an executive lounge. I am quite addicted to them, and I have been for 20 odd years. So so the other thing is, it's only 20 past 7 now. And the booking isn't until quarter past 8. So I'm going to go and see if they'll let me in. I don't think they will. I think they'll be quite rigorous here, because they are, if nothing else, here at Manchester Airport, very rules orientated. Um, but I'm going to go and see if I can get in. And simple reason for that is, you can see the queue behind me probably for the restaurant and also there's a massive queue for the toilet and I'm hungry and I need to use the toilet so it makes sense to go and try and use that lounge right I think they'll say no but let's just see what they say much to my surprise they actually let me in an hour early which she was sort of running and hiring about it she said what time's your flight so that's about quarter past ten which is just a little under three hours from now but I only paid for two and that's only because I couldn't get a booking at quarter past seven um, don't think there's any price difference, but I thought, is she or isn't she? And she sort of thought, well, probably took pity on me because I was a single traveller, which brings me on to the next point. So when you come into the escape room, there's one person sort of on the door there. It's not really a door, it's just sort of an entranceway. And she said, is there just you? And I said, yep, just me this morning. And the kind, it's the same as the 1903 lounge next door. They, they don't really like single travellers and they're not used to coping with them because what she said is you'll have to sit at one of these benches so she said you can either sit at the bench over there near the food or you can sit at the bench near the bar but you're not allowed to sit near the window unless you're a couple so that's a bit well, i'm not really into that sort of claim or claim or victim or anything but that does kind of discriminate against the single traveler but it was exactly the same as i had last year this time last year in fact next door at the 1903 so there's a sort of caution lesson for you there if you pay you 38.99 you're not necessarily going to get the best views. Not that there's anything to see at the moment because it's still dark, of course, at this time of the year. But if you want a table, I don't think that's possible as a single traveller. So I've got my breakfast, as you saw there. Quite a decent selection. No baked beans. I was never really a baked bean fan anyway, so that's no great shakes. But there's, there's also no potato wedges or anything like that. Or hash browns. Anyway, we've got sausage, we've got tomato, we've got bacon, we've got good old tomato sauce, and you can't really go wrong with tomato sauce. So, so far, what would I make to the Manchester Airport T2 experience? Well, one moment. It's okay, it's okay. It's never going to be perfect, but then, no airport's perfect. The only thing that constantly lets this airport down, really, is the security experience. Everything else about this airport, Terminal 2, is quite nice. And I can't really complain about much else. I'm really wanting to like this airport. A comment that I had in my last video when I was moaning about Manchester Airport was somebody said in the comments, <clears throat> it was quite rude, so I deleted it. Amongst other things, you're a spoilt middle class brat who is used to lounging at Heathrow. And I'm not. And I'm really not. Don't make the mistake of thinking I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I wasn't. Like a lot of people, I've worked for everything that I got. And a perk of working hard is these lounges. And I love the airport lounges, like I say. Because I'm not really spoiled. I'm not a spoiled brat. And the fact is, this, this particular individual, this chap, brought class into it. Looking around this lounge, if I were to guess, I would say that people come from all walks of life. So, and generally speaking, in lounges, you see people who come from working class backgrounds who've worked really hard and they've probably saved up for this all year. So why not? You've got middle class people who, through travel, like myself, through business travel, have managed to get hold of the lounge cards, you know, just through the perks of travel. It's what British Airways does particularly well. Equally, you see the upper class range over types. At the end of the day, class has nothing to do with getting into these lounges. But a poor experience can be experienced by anybody. So, I thought that comment was uncalled for, to be honest. I deleted it because it had a lot of uh, stuff in it as well. 
And one day I'll make a video about all the abuse that you get on YouTube. But for the moment, I just enjoy this breakfast, which is quite nice. But at all. <clears throat> I've got to say, the food is really good here. And I reserve judgment on whether it was worth £39 till I leave. Probably in a couple of hours yet. But so far, the bacon is nice and crispy, sausages, well cooked, and the seasoning on the tomato. The fried tomato is excellent, really good. I can't fault the food quality in here at all. And I've been in other lounges in different airports where the food has been pretty awful. No champagne, unfortunately. So, red wine it is. So that was the lounge. Would I pay 38 99 again? Yeah, probably I would actually. Yeah, I thought it was good value for money. It's a pity they don't take priority pass here, but forewarned is forearmed. I'll tell you, if you do have priority pass, it's very unlikely they'll accept it here. You do get sometimes they accept it during off-peak hours but generally speaking it's best just to pay up front it's one of those hassles that you could do without but there's a lot you get used to at manchester airport here over the years some of it good some of it not so good that said that said the airport experience this morning has been pretty good and i'm just wandering down to the gate now to get my flight so in summary it's a pity that security can't be just a little bit happier they are very it's not just that they're unhappy they're just rude from an experience point of view, this is probably the best experience I've had of Manchester Airport in 20 years. So things really came to a head back in April this year, uh, when it was all over the news, it was in the national media. That's the chief executive of the airport actually resigning, because service just got so bad. It was just such a horrible experience from start through to finish. You can see this morning, six months on, six months on, new chief executive. It's starting to look a lot better now, the staff are a lot happier up being told that it costs nothing to be nice and it really doesn't it really doesn't and i really wanted to like the security experience this morning i mean don't get me wrong of course you know, security is never going to be that pleasant because you have to get everything out and it's just the weird things here it's like the see-through bags they have a real hang-up about see-through bags here like no other airport that i ever used and it's strange because you would think that the civil aviation authority would have a standard some standard safety requirement across all of the airports. Don't get me wrong, security is a necessary thing, we have to do it. Keep the bad guys out of the sky, right? But from all the other airports that I use in the year, it can be done professionally, it can be done pleasantly. And I'll always be pleasant to anybody who's pleasant with me. But apart from that, yeah, big improvement here at Manchester Airport. To hear that from me, I would say give it a go. Give them a second chance. If you've been put off by Manchester Airport in the past, especially sort of late 21, early 22, when the airport really did hit rock bottom, then give it a go again. Because this morning, whilst, yeah, the security guys were not very pleasant, the actual speed through security, until I got to the conveyor, it was fine. It was fine. And then it all just fell apart, but that's nothing new here at Manchester Airport. That's just something you'll have to learn to live with. Other than that, yeah, like I say, probably, probably the best Manchester Airport experience I've had in what, 20 years. Okay, so we have our gate. Very exciting. Even though it's on an Airbus 321, it should have been a 757. I'll talk a bit more about that once we get into the air. But for now, just going to head down to gate 203. And we'll be on our way. How exciting. Uh, right, so if you've travelled through Manchester Airport before, this will be familiar because this is the old part of Terminal 2. Well, this is the original Terminal 2 that was falling to bits. Uh, not quite sure what they're doing here. Maybe they're sort of bringing it up to the same standards as the other gates, which are quite modern actually, to be fair. But yeah, this is where. So just round here is where they used to spit you out from security. And as you can see, none of these gates are in use right now. And so uh, talking about lounges, one of the grimmest airport lounges I've ever been in is up here, sort of on the upper level here. 
and I was amazed because it was the one that I think I think Singapore Airlines used it here I'm not sure one of the better airlines used it and I was amazed when I flew business class with them and they put me in that lounge it was really tiny and awful <laughs> yep so uh, looks like we're departing this morning from definitely the old part of the airport terminal 2 Hopefully we'll be on our way very soon. And there she is, the Airbus 321 that we're flying down to the Canaries on this morning in what is a very foggy day as you can see. Uh, so the reason why it's an Airbus 321 this morning is because it was originally supposed to be a 757, and it was when I booked it. And what Jet2 then seems to have done, quite logically, is this time of the year when there's a... It's actually a fairly quiet period in Northern Europe for all my American viewers. So people, next week and the week after, as we get close to Christmas, the fare on this route rockets from what I paid, which was about 70 quid, up to near a 500 as people head down to the Canaries for Christmas. So what Jet2 has taken the opportunity to do is send a lot of their 757s over to Shannon, for maintenance, for standard routine maintenance, which is sensible. It's, uh, it's just a pity really, because as you know, the 757 is my favorite aircraft ever, and that's why I booked this specific flight. But that's life, these things happen, and the Airbus 321 is still a fine aircraft to fly on. So on today's flight, I went with the final of the Jet 2 meals, so I've now tried all of them. This is penne bolognese. So I went with this meal, it costs £10.50, you just have to book it 48 hours at least before your flight. And I quite like these because there's a full menu, which I'll try and show on screen, and no other airline offers this, not even in British Airways Club Europe, in the sense that you can actually choose from, I think, about eight different courses. So as I say, this is the uh, penne bolognese, the last one, and after this I'll have tried them all. So I'll let you know what I think, which is my favourite. It comes with the meal, chocolate mousse, cheese and crackers, and a choice of tea, coffee, or water. So let's dig in and uh, let's see what it's like. It certainly, certainly smells nice. Quite watery, but mm. Mm. that's not bad. Mm. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I have to say, for £10.50, I'm quite happy to uh, pay that, because you get the guaranteed meal. And all of the Jet 2 meals are pretty good, but we'll finish it off and I'll let you know what I think, which is my favourite. And I'll also show you some of the other menu options as well, if uh, the full meal doesn't float your boat. Try the chocolate mousse. It's probably quite nice. The trouble is, I'm just not a chocolate mousse fan at all. And it's okay. So, with food packed away, gotta say, penne bolognese was very nice. As is every other Jet 2 meal. Is it my favourite Jet 2 meal? No. Which one is? The beef massaman curry. It is excellent if you like beef. If you like curries but beef isn't your thing, then they also do a nice chicken tikka curry. What I would stress though is that every Jet 2 meal I've ever had has been really good. I've not tried the vegetarian meals, I'm not a vegetarian. I probably should try them, but as far as the non-veg meals go, definitely beef mass man curry, having tried all of them now. The one that I had which I wouldn't have again, which is the only one, was the breakfast. So they do an all-day breakfast. And the only problem with that is that it was quite watery, as is always the case in my experience with airline all-day breakfasts. But apart from that, yeah, pretty good meal. Very pleased with that, for £10.50. But if booking the meal isn't really your thing, or you just fancy something different, you can also get some hot meals on board, subject to availability, obviously. So I probably should tell you a bit about today's flight. 
as you know, this was supposed to be a Boeing 757, my favorite aircraft of all time. I did a dedicated 757 video, so if you've not seen that, I'll pop a link above. You should have a look at it. it features the 757 from start to really finish, because as far as the 757 goes now, it'll be in service for a long time to come, but there are no more being built by Boeing. Um, so any that are left in service, really that's it. And most of them now are operated by the cargo airlines. So back to today's flight. So today's flight was on an Airbus A321. And this particular aircraft was inherited from Thomas Cook. Well, not inherited. Jet 2 bought it with the sad demise of Thomas Cook Airlines a few years ago. And it's strategically important for Jet 2 because this aircraft type will become the mainstream aircraft for Jet 2 in years to come. They've got an order of, I think, 50 at least, maybe plus to 100 or options for 100 over the coming few years. And as the A321s, the NEOs, come online next year, they will gradually replace the 757s, sadly, and some of Jet 2's older 737s. And that's a great choice as far as I'm concerned, because if you're not going to fly the 757, the next best aircraft, in my view, is this Airbus 321. So, in addition to buying the meal for £10.50, I also splashed out £29 on this extra leg room seat, row 11, if you're interested. And I have to say, it's worth every penny, at more than six foot tall, and what can be sometimes a five hour flight. We've got a fairly decent headwind today, so it's only about four hours five, but I have been on it before, it routes via La Gomera when Tenerife and the airspace is busy in the Tenerife area. So sometimes flying down to the Canaries can be a five hour trek. And the small seats that you get on the soft standard seats can be quite tight, even in business class in British Airways in Club Europe now. So an extra legroom seat, if you can bag one, uh, 29 quid. It's good value for money. I was happy to pay it. And really the other good thing about flying with Jet 2 in the winter is I do like flying with Jet 2 generally, I fly them a lot down to the Canary Islands, I just prefer their product offering. But there's nothing wrong with EasyJet, or even Ryanair, if you want a really cheap flight, you can do it for £60 return with Ryanair, and there's nothing wrong with Ryanair at all, with its fleet of modern 737s. But I do like flying with Jet 2, particularly at this time of the year, because they don't exhaustively use their aircraft. So this aircraft, today, literally only goes down to the Canaries and back again to Manchester, and that's it. So there's no real risk of it being delayed if it's, say, done an early morning rotation down to Larnaca or been down to the Canaries before. It literally starts its day on this flight at quarter past ten and then flies straight back up to Manchester and that's it for the day. So the overall price I paid for this flight today was £144 one way, including the meal and the extra legroom seat. And I've got to say, I was pretty happy with that. You can't really knock that. It's a bit more than you'd pay to fly with Ryanair. Like I said earlier, you can do Ryanair at certain times of the year for £60 return, including taxes. And that doesn't include the food or the extra legroom seats, of course. But the beauty of flying to the Canaries these days is that there's so much competition. From Manchester, you've got Jet to Ryanair, EasyJet. And then if you go via Madrid, you can fly with Whaling or BA by Heathrow. There is a lot of competition down to the Canaries, and that keeps the prices low. So with that, welcome to Lanzarote, just in baggage reclaim. Just got to go and get the car now from Seacar, which is the company that I always use. They're not sponsored for me to tell you that, but they are very good. I've never had a problem with them. So I'm just going to go and grab the car, see what car it is. It's usually a Volvo or an Alfa Romeo, so we'll see what it is today. And then head out, find the car and head to the hotel. And just like everywhere in Western Europe, I guess, and a lot of places around the world, Lanzarote Airport, as barren as it is, Lanzarote, as barren as it is, it's Christmassy. Hopefully, these people have got a car for me. Let's have a look at the Christmas tree. Right, so that was quite speedy at Sea Car as always. And again, they're not sponsored to tell me that. I'm just telling you that because they are a really good tyre car company down here in the Canary Islands. So, it's an Alfa Romeo Stelios. Stelio? Stelios. Not Stelios, is it? That's the guy who invented EasyJet. 
Stelvio, that's the one, Stelvio. So I just need to go to the office, get the keys, and then we can be on our way to the hotel. Uh, so uh, just as I was uh, waxing lyrical about C car there, let's <laughs> get the keys. And uh, she said, no, it's not possible, the car's not here yet. So I hope they're gonna clean it before I get it. I don't want to get into a dirty hire car, do I? Would you? Uh, but that's the first time that's happened at C car. The car is normally waiting, that said, it is quite a high grade car this time. I usually just hire sort of a, a mid-range type car, like a Seat something or like an Astro or something like that which is fine perfectly good but this one's one of the higher level cars so they probably haven't got as many of them I'm quite looking forward to it actually I quite like Alphas I'd never actually buy one because they're so unreliable but uh, as a higher car it'd be quite good fun so I'll show you it when it arrives but so far today so good nothing really well nothing at all's gone wrong really all ah, right so we have our car the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Wow, that's a nice looking car, and it's diesel too. Right, let's get in it, have a look around. Ooh, oh, this looks very nice. Oh, it's a bit warm. So they had actually cleaned it, which is a good news. I can't even get into it. Ah, seats electric, that's all right. Let me just try and squeeze in here. Right, okay, let's get the motor running, and then we can uh, get the aircon on. So let's put that into auto. So air conditioning's on. Let's get it nice and cool. There you go. It's coming through nice and cool now. Right, so let me program in the sat nav. Then we can get out of here, get going, get down to the hotel, catch up with all my friends. So I've just stopped just to show you where I am. So I'm about five minutes away from the hotel now, just going to go and see my friends tonight and take it easy because I've been traveling now for 12 hours. But if you've not already guessed and if you've not seen my previous videos, you should check them out because I love being in the Canary Islands. It's an absolute thrill to be back. I've traveled the world in my lifetime but there is nowhere I'd rather be than right here in the Canaries, whether it's here in Lanzarote, Gran Canaria, La Graciosa, wherever it is, I just love being here. I just wanted to show you this because a lot of people call Lanzarote Lanzagrotti, and it's anything but. I think people call it that because it is quite barren. And a lot of people will tell you that all you'll see in Lanzarote is just barren black volcanic rock. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm just on the south coast here, uh, like I say, five minutes from the hotel. And I just wanted to show you this because we only have about two hours of daylight left and I've been traveling all day, but I wanted to capture this because it's just a fabulous place to be. So there you go. Anybody that tells you that Lanzarote is Lanzagrotti, it's just black, it's volcanic, it's horrible. It absolutely isn't. There is greenery here on the island. They make wine here in Lanzarote. We've just got the last of the sunlight and down there in the distance, once I've been down this mountain road here, down there is the resort where I'm staying for the next few days. Uh, my friends came here on Saturday, unfortunately, because of personal circumstances, once again, I couldn't be on the same flight with them, but I'm here now, absolutely thrilled. So do stay with me for the next few days because I'm gonna show you my favorite places to see here on the island. And believe me, there is lots and lots to see. Oh, and just one other thing. Let me just show you the Alfa Romeo Stelvio whilst I've, now that I've got it out of the uh, parking lot at the airport because I think this is a beautiful car. And so you might be thinking, well, he just got in it and drove it away. And again, I'm not going to push C car too much because they're not sponsoring this video. They have sponsored me in the past very kindly to make videos. But as you can see, there's one or two scratches on it. It's a higher car. Higher cars get scratched, of course. But the great thing with C car, which is almost unheard of anywhere else in the world, is there's no actual vehicle excess. So you pay your money. So I just paid the rental rate this afternoon for the few days I'm down here, took the keys, and I can take it back in whatever condition I do. Now I always look after cars because I have huge respect for cars. I love driving and I love cars, especially beautiful cars like this. Right, so we are here at the Sandos Papagayo Hotel. Absolutely thrilled to be here, like I say, the sun is shining. We've probably got about another hour and a half and uh, gonna try out those line bikes tomorrow. Don't know if you can see those. 
gonna have a go on those tomorrow first thing so stay tuned that'll be in another video just dropped my bags off with Sam who was very courteously the doorman he doesn't like to be on camera unfortunately so I won't be showing you Sam on these videos but uh, there's a couple of other friends down here as well which is great so we're gonna have a good few days of shits and giggles as they say and let me show you the hotel so this is it you'll have to pardon the works going on just to the left of me i think they're building an extension but this is the four star sandos papagayo hotel it's somewhere i've never stayed before recommended to me by sam whose parents i think have stayed here but um, from the outside looks very plush i've gone for the most expensive room i could find and that's only because i'm just not traveling as much at the moment unfortunately so a bit more money to spend so here it is the four star sandos papagaya so what we'll do i'll get checked in and then i'll show you the room which will hopefully be top notch first rate excellent it comes highly rated so stick with me for a couple of minutes and we'll be in the room Well, let's take a quick look around the room then what we've got is a bath shower unit typical his and hers baths oh no very modern the room itself is large as i said this is the best room that they do so you're guaranteed a sea view it's all inclusive you get access to the exclusive bar areas and the lounges and of course you get the classic bottle of carver with two glasses and I'll have to choose which friend I share that with and then we move on to the balcony of course which is rather large and you get this rather nice sea view which I'll show you in the morning when it's light Right, so let's get the bottle of carver opened, which is in, I presume that was in ice. Yes, it must have been. So the complimentary bottle of carver that you get with the plush rooms here at the hotel. Spot the Neanderthal that never opens fizzy wine. It's posh, it's got a cork in it. Thought it might be screw top. Hey! Right. Cheers. Well, actually, that's not bad. It's not a fair size balcony really, although the paint on the ceiling has seen better days. And it being December, the hotel itself is illuminated like a giant Christmas tree. And so by the power of video editing, it's now daytime. And just like that friends, it is morning and a beautiful morning I have to say. And the watch is telling me that we have a day high today of 24 degrees back home it's about three degrees below zero at the moment as you can see the sun just coming up above the mountains in the distance and that's where we're going to start our journey today so the sandos papagayo with the sunlight just in the background we've got about 10 minutes of sunlight left and as you've seen it's a really nice hotel if you stay in the royal elite and you book it at certain times of the year it's sometimes no more than 13 to 15 pounds more per night and it's well worth it because you're going to get access to these lounges you're going to get an all-inclusive meal and you're going to get a much nicer room with a guaranteed sea view and why wouldn't you want a view just like that and if i could just take a few seconds to say a huge thanks to all of my patreon supporters this year it's people like james joe and kieran that help me bring these videos to you every month this is a fabulous beautiful hotel in a nice quiet part of Lanzarote. So if you've enjoyed this video, 
don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because in the next video you'll be seeing my six favorite activities to do right here on the fabulous island of Lanzarote. So I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.